person ain't no big deal. Just put the gun to their head. So I've got some shit news. My, uh, I have it somewhere. My thing that does all my audio is fucking broken. So it'll be, you know, some time before I get a new video out with, like, not shitty audio. Was really butthurt initially. I'm not gonna release this video. I was like, eh, I'm gonna really butthurt right now. But I'll just stick with the camera audio. So, that out of the, that out of the way. This will be a relatively short video detailing a large group of indie horror games that tend to be in the first person perspective. I'm sure you've heard of them, or at least played them. Amnesia, Slender, Penumbra, Outlast, you get the idea. Now I'm making this video because I've had a few requests on it, and I'm kind of lumping them all together because number one, I don't find them very scary for the most part, and they're kind of boring to play, and two, they're pretty similar for the most part, they're, they're mostly similar. So. Um, yeah, let's get to this, so it's, you know, just so I don't have to talk about this in the future. A lot of people consider Amnesia and Outlast to be some of the scariest games ever made, which to me is ridiculous, but horror is so subjective, I won't argue with it. As I've stated at least four times now, even being a huge horror fan, most fictional media doesn't scare me. So this isn't, this game isn't scary enough for me, therefore, it's bad. It's more, I don't really consider these survival horror games, and why I don't care for them too much. First off, I want to make clear, some of these games are competently made and very atmospheric. They can, and have, told good stories and look damn good. So with that disclaimer aside, let's get this donkey show going. Amnesia, Slender, Penumbra, Outlast are horror games, but... Crazy enough, the lack of combat makes them so much less scary to me. Now hold on! I'm sure you just unsubscribed and left a comment how I don't know what I'm talking about. Personally, when a game relies so heavily on the sheer fact of no combat, it just annoys me more than anything. Hiding in a game can be used well, i.e. Alien Isolation, a game that is literally survival horror by all means. Amnesia was pretty spooky for the first couple of encounters, but when the only thing I can do when spotted is run or die, it's just a nuisance. Same shit with almost all of these games. Instead of making combat less viable, they got rid of combat altogether. Some of the scariest games I've ever played involve combat, and usually it's mostly functional. Silent Hill 3 has the most fluid combat of the series, and it's easily the scariest one to me. So much so that playing it is something I mentally have to prepare myself for. Outlast, on the other hand, has no combat, which sounds scary, right? I mean, in real life, I'd feel less scared if I had some weapon to bludgeon the life out of something instead of my fist, but that's really nice. Instead, in Outlast, the spook factor lasts about 5 minutes for the first encounter. But after that, seeing an enemy isn't scary since all I have to do is run and hide from him. Hey faggot, remember all those times you said evasion and survival horror is encouraged? What do you say to that now? I say, that's the key to it all. The fact that I have the option to fight them, yet avoiding them is the optimal path, is what makes this shit so scary. Combat isn't my first choice, but it is an option you have to take at some point. Having the combat function less than fluently makes the idea engaging in the combat that much more horrific. If I fuck up running away from them, or if I can't, I have to fight them. If there isn't anything besides hiding, each encounter ends exactly the same way. I run, I hide behind a box, or I die. This is especially true for the first person variety. Running past or away from enemies is so easy, it's not like in Resident Evil, where you act like the biggest dick OG when you perfectly circumvent in a room full of zombies. 
In that case, it is so much more harder since you have to accurately steer around the zombies, and it's not a perspective that's relative to your character's vision. Yes, this is all personal preference, but here's what happened every time I play a game like Amnesia. It's super tense, up until about the second encounter. Then, it turns into me running past a shit ton of enemies, hiding, or dying. Simplicity can be a good thing, but this is too simplistic. You have one main mechanic, light stealth. On the other hand, games like Five Nights at Freddy's, which seem to stir up the polarizing pot, actually are much more tense and scarier than those other games. Structuring it much more like a tower defense game and making it so much shorter actually works a lot better. Not enjoying sequential encounters with the enemies in Outlast doesn't bode well for a game that spans at least five hours. Five Nights at Freddy's, which I suck dick at, took me less than two hours. Each night progressively gets more and more tense. Almost too much so. Couple all of this with not being able to move, having to stop the, uh, uh, goofy animatronics from reaching me, all within my power limit, creates a terrific experience. Whether or not you find the automaton scary or not isn't really the matter here. The atmosphere is as good as Amnesia or Outlast, and much scarier to me. The story is pretty tenuous in comparison to said other games, but fits perfectly with the length of the game. Sure, seeing their dumb fucking faces outside the door makes me chuckle every time, but there's no fucking around when it comes to Wolfie. Every time I see that son of a bitch running at me, my asshole clenches so hard, it actually inverts itself. That struggle against the clock to shut the door, it's fucking insane. With the game being so much shorter and having more things to do makes for a super intense experience that may or may not be scary to people. I will say Amnesia The Dark Descent, the very first one, is probably my favorite of these first person ones because it's the scariest, it's got the best monster design. I really actually like the monster from the first Amnesia. It reminds me a lot of like the lion figures from Silent Hill 2. Like, it could have been human at one point. But, fuck if I know what it is it now, I mean, yeah. but, I don't know, they're just not that fun, they just seem to have one single note, it's just like the same mechanic of like, light stealth. Five Nights at Freddy's to me is more fun to play, but just shorter length just makes it that much easier to get into, and, I don't know, Amnesia is very story heavy, and there's a lot of notes. So that can quickly draw people out. Five Nights at Freddy's you just kind of jump right into, which is really nice. I mean, yeah, you have a lot of suspense building amnesia. Five Nights at Freddy's, it doesn't matter what it is. It's gonna scare the shit out of you. It's like, they could have replaced the automatons with, like, clowns. And it would have been exactly the same, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Leave a comment. Let me know what game you find absolutely the scariest one you've ever played. I'm really curious to see what people think. I, I mean, I don't know. I know people say Outlast and Asia. I'm just curious. What game do you think is by far the scariest game you've ever played? And when you leave your comment, make sure it's in the MLA format, because if it's not, I won't fucking read it. Aren't you glad you learned that in high school? MLA format? Fucking audio equipment. Oh, yeah. Next video, we're talking about Pakami. Newer game. It's gonna lead back to my floor, bro. What you even know? Resident Evil Zero Remastered?